So going on, <laughs> well, uh, quite quite fast actually, uh, proceeding to even a second order ODE in exercise 11.1 number three. Um, here, still another method will be introduced, which is called variation of constants. It's a very famous and I must say very effective tool that we uh, have available. Now, uh, first of all, we can be happy for, for a moment to find that this second order differential equation is homogeneous. So it does not have an inhomogeneity, uh, so-called disorder function. This is a good. Uh, this is good news because the homogeneous uh, equation is easier to solve than any kind of inhomogeneous one. Now the bad news is that right away in the next exercise there will be the same equation in the uh, inhomogeneous <laughs> version. But that's uh, that's hard stuff. But uh, we will take our time to to get along. So for the first. Uh, for now, for some minutes, we just want to please. Uh, we, we just want to take a step into this and find out what what could we do. You see these terms of x uh, before our um, second and first uh, primes of of y, and even for the zero. You, you, you know, I sometimes call this the deri um, derivative number zero, <laughs> the function itself. Yeah, that's a good idea to call it uh, the zero um, derivative. Well, anyway. The, the, the equation is not even normalized. That's not a problem. But one thing is uh, is advantages. Somebody, whoever, <laughs> gave us a solution. So this fundamental solution given here, which is called y1, just for um, the purpose of keeping it apart from the other one, which we are looking for, is equal to, well, it needn't be 1 times e power x, but e power x is the term that fulfills this equation automatically, you will find easily by just putting it in. You see why it is? Uh, use e power x for y, and then also for y prime and for y double prime, of course, because its derivative is unchanged. Then you will find you can put it outside of parentheses. You can sort of put it away. And what remains is just the sum of these polynomial coefficients. And then you will carefully doing so, you will find that they all cancel out. You see, this is x, this is negative x. This is x times x is x squared, and here's negative x squared. We have negative negative two, which is positive two, and here we have negative two. So everything cancels out and it gets zero for all values of x and the equation is fulfilled. So that's, you could say that's a lucky um, case of, you could even guess that, the exponential, natural exponential function is the solution of this equation. And now there's something very important to know. And, and this is, I must say, really a nice feature of, uh, of the, the topic of differential equations. You can be absolutely sure that the order of any differential equation, ordinary differential equation, defines the number of linearly independent terms of x which solve this equation. So that's the reason why we're looking for still another. We could say this is the general solution. Why not? Well, uh, of course, I would have to allow for a factor of c additionally. That's that's fine. But this one, okay, right? So, but this can't be the the, the general solution of this equation. Why can't it be? Because it is second order, and it's a fact that the second order differential equation always has two very different solutions to it which are even linearly independent. And this is much the same wording as used in vector algebra. And that's interesting and nice because uh, the so-called Hilbert space, um, named after the famous uh, 19th century the German mathematician, um, David Hilbert. He, he was one of, yeah, you could say the, one of the best mathematicians of his time, uh, the famous, the most famous one anyway. And he found out that Functions can be handled uh, in sort of like vectors, but in a very special sense. And that's why we can uh, introduce the, um, the wording of uh, linear independence even for functions. So that's that's a topic which leads us to the so-called Vronsky determinant, very importantly. Then we also want to, to be concerned about some initial conditions. So there's plenty of things to do in order to solve this equation. 
next time then. So first of all, what is variation of constants? Well, after having found one solution, it's just an um, interesting idea to say, um, in order to find another, which I call Y2, um, fundamental, we say fundamental solution to this equation, it's perhaps it's a good idea to replace this constant for a term of x, an unknown term of x. And in order to make this clear, it's just a little bit renamed. Uh, so C is, is exchanged for K, just, well, whatever. So this is a so-called, um, well, it, it sounds a little bit contradictory, a variation of constant. Well, this is a varied constant. So it has been a constant, but now it's allowed to uh, be dependent on x. And if it is, it's possible to take this approach and then just, um, well, uh, take the first derivative, the second derivative using the product rule, you see? And uh, um, since we don't know what k of x is at the moment, we use the product rule, um, well, just symbolically. Right, so we take k prime times e of x and then plus k times e of x prime. So that, that, that's the usual way. And so leaving away this of x notation, we get something with k prime k and then k prime k still, and then it's k double prime taking the second derivative. You see what we are doing. We are replacing our unknown y against an unknown k. And it turns out by filling this in, this approach uh, result in, to the original differential equation, it turns out it transforms to another second order differential equation, this time for k. Now you would say, okay, what's, what's the benefit? Well, the benefit is that this new transformed differential equation does not contain the derivative number zero. You see, this is what I call derivative number zero, number one, number two. And if this wouldn't appear, okay, we, and, and this is the case here, uh, we just have k double prime and k prime in the end, and k doesn't appear anymore, means that we can use a substitution by just taking still another symbol, L, capital L, uh, to be the first derivative of our unknown k, so that k double prime um, is transformed to L prime, and k prime is replaced by L, and we suddenly have a relatively simple first order differential equation for L. And this can be solved with separation of variables. And there you will see how helpful this method always is. So that's quite a long way to go, okay? And we are in the middle of the road right now, and we will find the second fundamental solution to this differential equation next time. Thanks.